This is a context-free soundbite meant to grab your attention. So is this, and it implies that several people are involved in this story. And I'm a third voice. So we wanted to make this documentary. Um, this, this actual documentary. Uh, th this one. And we began by considering how documentaries are typically structured. Obviously, the first thing you think of would be what's referred to as the talking heads, which is what I'm doing now, addressing the viewer and speaking on the subject at hand. Usually there's a wide shot that establishes the interviewee in their space, and then there's often a closer camera as well from a slightly different angle. Generally, the interviewee's name will appear on screen, so we have context for who we're seeing and what relationship they have to the story being told. Now, you can't just have one person doing all the talking. You've got to have more than one person. And I'm another person. Once you have two people, you can do more interesting things that you wouldn't be able to achieve with just one speaker. For instance, I can begin a sentence... Which I can then finish in a way that makes it clear that I support the original idea. Or I can simply say something... And then I can say the same thing, but in my own way, sort of placing it in a different context. So we would cut to me saying something. And then back to me again. Then back to me. And then back again over to me. Back. And forth. And forth. And back. You know, like that. Most documentaries will have a handful of primary subjects, but pepper in other interviews for greater context. And just to liven up the viewing experience, often at totally different locations. I'm one of those voices you heard just before the title, but I don't totally understand the concept, so my contribution isn't really adding much to this documentary. Further, in most documentaries, it's nice to include additional content like behind-the-scenes footage that's perhaps handheld or otherwise not as polished. Or even archival photographs, which you could do a nice pan across to make it more visually interesting. A big question when it comes to any creative project, and indeed documentaries in particular, is of course, why? Why did we decide to make a documentary about itself? Well, that's an interesting question, and there's a really multi-layered answer. Using a J-cut to make it very clear that I'm continuing Paul's thought, the main reason for us to do this documentary at all is that we've made this documentary before. Nearly 20 years ago, in fact. And when we asked for viewer feedback on which of our old videos should be remade, this one was voted as a winner. Of course, by its very nature, that documentary isn't exactly this documentary. But also it is. In terms of actually filming this documentary... So that was a tense moment just now, where I wasn't really sure what I was going to say next, but... I took a step back and considered how it could fit into the greater story we're telling with this documentary, and I used it as an opportunity to talk about tense moments. And I'm ultimately really pleased with how it came together. Which isn't to say filming this documentary was without incident. In fact, we encountered some pretty frustrating technical issues. At one point, the mic we were using actually cut out. And another behind-the-scenes story that I'm going to really enjoy is that while trying to recount amusing behind-the-scenes anecdotes, uh, Paul, who you will have seen doing his own pieces to camera, actually sneaks up behind me and starts waving around and making silly faces. And I don't realize he's doing this until I turn around and I see that he's doing this. And I go, Paul! And he runs off and I have a good chuckle. <laughs> 20 years ago, I said that when we told people we were going to make a documentary about itself, they got so confused that their heads would explode, which obviously was hyperbole. But more recently, when I suggested we might make a documentary about itself, and also a previous version about itself, that was also about itself and this version, their heads actually did explode. Eventually we arrive at the end of the documentary, and I say that I've been very pleased with how the whole project has gone, and it's been a really positive experience for me. And also that I hope it helps future filmmakers who want to make a documentary that is entirely self-referential. And then I say, thank you for watching, and then we cut to the credits.
documentaries don't typically have what we would refer to as stingers, but this one does.